<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. My name is Cody Blois. I am the Member of Parliament for King's Hands in beautiful Nova Scotia, and I'm proud and privileged to say that I am the chair of the Atlantic Liberal Caucus. Je suis fier et privilégié d'être le président du caucus libéral de l'Atlantique. As you will see, I'm joined by my colleagues from the Atlantic Caucus, as many of those who could be here today, and of course, the Prime Minister. I'm wearing a Nova Scotia tartan tie, and I'm wearing it anytime I have the chance to be in Ottawa. I try to wear it because we're proud, of course, of where we come from, not just Nova Scotia, but indeed all Atlantic provinces. Uh, but I wear it on days that are special and announcements and initiatives that really matter to the people we represent, and today is one of those days. Nous sommes ici aujourd'hui pour annoncer des mesures cruciales pour la question d'abordabilité dans le Canada atlantique, ainsi que des changements aux politiques nationales du gouvernement pour s'assurer qu'elles reflètent les différentes réalités vécues à travers le pays. And I want to say, as the chair of the Atlantic Caucus, I couldn't be prouder of the 24 members that sit in our caucus for their advocacy, because we have remained steadfast, focused on the question of affordability, and also seeking to advance solutions that matter to the people we represent. And I want to give some context to the journalists who are here in the room and indeed Canadians that might be watching at home. Atlantic Canada has a higher proportion of any residents living outside of urban areas than any other region of the country. So we are the most rural in all of the country. Nous avons un grand nombre de parcs immobiliers locatifs qui dans plusieurs cas, sont inefficaces au sens de leur consommation d'énergie. We also have a disproportionately high number of households that still use home heating to heat their homes. In fact, in my home province of Nova Scotia, that rate is close to 40 percent. Il est important de comprendre que le Canada est un grand pays et que la réalité vécue par ses concitoyens peut être très différente. L'annonce d'aujourd'hui reflète des programmes et des changements de politique qui tiennent compte de cette réalité. While today's announcement is going to be good news for Atlantic Canada, it is good news across the country, including in rural Canada. As a member of Parliament representing a rural riding, today's adjustments and programming are welcomed as a better way to ensure that our programs are meeting the needs of all Canadians, including those, of course, living in rural Canada. But it is important to remember why we have instituted a national price on pollution across the country. It is one of the most effective ways to be able to fight climate change and reduce emissions. And I want to remind folks, there are 77 jurisdictions around the world that have a form of carbon price, and Canada is not alone. We are shared similar pro uh, policies. And of course, this summer was a reminder of the impact of climate change. No one in Atlanta, Canada needs reminders more than us. For those that live in Port of Basque, the impacts of Hurricane Fiona. For those in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, the impact of forest fires this summer. And indeed, the flash floods that Nova Scotia saw this past year. In fact, uh, we lost four people in my riding in terrible flooding. So today's announcement shows leadership of responding to a national question of affordability and environmental progress. While our caucus were strong advocates to find adjustments, this was a whole of government approach. And I want to thank uh, our Atlantic cabinet ministers. We have six of them. I know that they have been strong advocates at the cabinet table. And I want to uh, certainly thank uh, three cabinet ministers in particular whose portfolio touches upon today's announcement perhaps the most. Uh, to Minister Guibault, to Minister Wilkinson, and indeed to Minister Freeland. I know they have worked extremely hard to be able to move this forward. I had a number of personal conversations with Minister Freeland. I know she has been a strong advocate, and I want to personally thank her as well. But ultimately, these types of announcements that are being made today is the prerogative of the Prime Minister. And Prime Minister, on behalf of our caucus, I want to say thank you for listening to our feedback, but also showing vision on how we can support important affordability measures and long-term supports to help people with a transition. I want to contrast that with the leader of the official opposition. He'll be in Atlantic Canada this weekend 
offering simplistic solutions that don't offer long-term support on affordability. He has been the leader of the Conservative Party now for over a year and has offered no vision, no plan, and no evidence that he cares about balancing the important questions of affordability and environment. In fact, his party just a couple weeks ago voted against the legislation the government put forward, C49. And for those at home that may not know, that is legislation that is crucial to Atlantic Canada's clean energy future. It is supported by the Premier of Nova Scotia, Tim Houston. It is supported by the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Andrew Fury. And the Conservatives voted against our future on that. Today's announcement stands in complete contrast to what I just talked about. And I want to welcome the Prime Minister to deliver today's important news. Prime Minister, over to you. Thank you, Cody, for your words, but also for your leadership. It is uh, an extraordinary team I have behind me, and all of you worked incredibly hard uh, to make sure we got to this place. And Cody, your voice uh, resonated strongly in caucus and uh, across Atlantic Canada. So it's really great to be here today with this entire Atlantic team who are just outstanding representatives in the region, who continue to focus on the big things that matter to pe people, continue to focus on being there to solve the challenges of this very challenging time in the right ways that are going to leave people better off for years and even decades to come. La réalité, c'est qu'il y a des gens qui ont de la difficulté à payer leurs factures présentement et qui vivent énormément de pression, pas juste en Atlantique, mais à travers le pays. On a déjà pris bien des mesures pour aider les Canadiens à joindre les deux bouts, y compris le remboursement pour l'épicerie et les services de garde d'enfants à 10 dollars par jour. Bien aujourd'hui, on prend les nouvelles mesures pour s'assurer que notre engagement à protéger notre environnement continue à être mis en œuvre d'une manière qui profite aux gens des provinces de l'Atlantique et des régions rurales à travers le pays. Let me first talk a bit about the price on pollution. Economists and experts around the world have long known that putting a price on carbon emissions is the best way to drive down those emissions that cause climate change. It's the cheapest, most efficient, and most impactful way. And it's working. We are bending the curve, leading the G7 countries because of our price on pollution. And now we designed that price on pollution so that it incentivizes people to choose less polluting ways to live and work, and it puts money back in the pockets of eight out of 10 households where the federal system applies. So it both drives behavior and puts more money back in the pockets of eight out of 10 households across the country. So it supports people to make better choices and puts money back in their pockets. However, we've heard clearly from Atlantic Canadians through our amazing Atlantic MPs that since the federal pollution price came into force this summer, replacing provincial systems, certain features of that pollution price needed to be adjusted to work for everyone. Specifically, as Cody said, Many people in Atlantic Canada and in rural communities across the country rely on home heating oil. And to be blunt, the price signal on heating oil is not resulting in enough people being able to switch to electric heat pumps despite people wanting to move to these cleaner home heating options. Well, as a government that is focused on evidence and data and outcomes and that is listening to Canadians, we heard you. We heard our Atlantic MPs and we heard Atlantic Canadians. We heard it through conversations at the door, conversations with other orders of government, concerns even as people were concerned about the need to continue to fight climate change concerns about our abilities to continue to support our families and make it through winters, and concerns that even though people wanted to do the right thing, they weren't necessarily given the option or the ability to do it. So this team behind me worked incredibly hard with our ministers, with our whole team, to get it right, to make sure that we are still leading in the fight against climate change, 
that we are unwavering in our commitment to protect Atlantic Canadians and indeed all Canadians from the extreme weather events that are increasingly the norm, while ensuring that people can be confident about their present and their future financially. Now, Cody talked about how all Atlantic Canadians understand as well as anyone else in the country why we need to fight climate change and what the impacts of extreme weather are on people. But we have to make sure we're fighting climate change in ways that supports all Canadians. That has been at the centre of our choices as a government for the past eight years. Fight climate change while supporting Canadians in how we do it. So that is why today we are announcing a three-year pause on the federal pollution price on heating oil so that we can give everyone the time and ability to switch to heat pumps. <laughs> now switching to an electric heat pump from oil heating, which is very vulnerable to volatile global market prices, can save people a lot of money. In fact, it can mean as much as thousands of dollars a year less spent on energy bills. So the second part of our announcement today is that, piloting in the Atlantic, we're working with provinces to install a free heat pump for people who are making at or below median household income. And to encourage people to sign up for the change, we're providing a $250 incentive payment. That's money in your pocket right now. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know about that one, guys. <laughs> and for everyone else, we've got an enhanced program that will deliver heat pumps up front to be paid off with the savings you'll be getting over the coming years. We are switching to heat pumps off home heating oil as a region in Atlantic Canada and as a country. And one more thing, today we are doubling from 10 to 20 percent the rural top-up that people get as part of their quarterly pollution price rebates. Because if you live in a rural community, you don't have the same options that people who live in cities do. We get that. So this is more money in your pocket to recognize those realities, even as we continue to fight climate change and build a stronger economy. L'annonce aujourd'hui couvre une série de mesures qui inclut de doubler le supplément pour les résidents des régions rurales dans le cadre des remises trimestrielles pour la tarification de la pollution. Ça va aussi permettre à plus de gens d'opter plus facilement pour une thermopompe qui va leur faire économiser de l'argent et garder notre air propre. This package has a lot of big pieces that will make a real difference. And the bottom line is this. Life is tough for many people right now. And it can be tough in different ways, depending on whether you live in the Atlantic or in rural Ontario or in a big city like Montreal or Calgary. I hear that. This team hears that. And we'll always have your back. By investing in you, by putting more money in your pocket, and by finding the right solutions that not only make life more affordable, but keep a strong, healthy future for everyone. Canada is the best country in the world. Let's keep working to make it even better. Content maintenant de prendre vos questions. La première question est à Denis Bavin, Radio Canada. Euh, Monsieur le Premier ministre, euh, avec tous les efforts consentis pour lutter contre les changements climatiques, force est de constater aujourd'hui que vous reculez, que c'est un pas en arrière. Est-ce que vous donnez finalement raison à Pierre Poilievre? Au contraire, l'annonce d'aujourd'hui nous permet euh, d'accélérer encore plus dans notre, euh, nos investissements pour contrer les changements climatiques. On a vu que euh, le prix sur la pollution n'était pas suffi suffisant pour que assez de gens passent aux thermopompes. 
Donc, on va dire, s'ils n'ont pas ce choix-là, donnons-leur l'option. Alors, on annonce aujourd'hui un programme qui va livrer des thermopompes gratuitement pour ceux qui sont euh, aux revenus moyens ou moins, et à, en travaillant avec les provinces. Et pour tous les autres, on va offrir des thermopompes euh, dès le début qui vont pouvoir payer avec les économies qui vont amener au cours des années. Mais on veut que ce changement se fasse rapidement. Donc, on donne un horizon de trois ans pendant lesquels euh, la, le prix sur la pollution lié euh, au chauffage à l'huile ne sera pas appliqué pour que les gens, justement, puissent profiter et soient motivés pour profiter de ce programme. Et d'ailleurs, pour le programme à gens à faible revenu avec un thermopompe gratuit, on va offrir, en partenariat avec les provinces, un bonus ou un, 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 un encouragement de 250 pour qu'ils le fassent. Le but de notre prix sur la pollution, c'est de changer les comportements et appuyer les Canadiens pendant qu'ils changent qui luttent contre les changements climatiques et euh, qui améliorent l'environnement. C'est exactement ce qu'on amène avec ce programme. Donc, est un, 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 on est en train de miser encore plus sur notre approche pour lutter contre les changements climatiques parce que c'est bon pour la planète, c'est bon pour l'économie et c'est bon pour les familles. Mais une autre question, si vous permettez. Euh, par définition, la taxe sur le carbone, il faut que ça fasse mal. On veut forcer les gens à changer leurs habitudes, ça ne va pas à l'encontre, justement, de l'esprit même de votre mesure? Non, parce que cette taxe carbone sur euh, le chauffage à l'huile ne résultait pas, n'avait pas comme conséquence qu'assez de gens optaient pour des thermopompes. C'est un investissement d'autour de, de 20 000 euh, et il y a beaucoup de gens, malgré les pressions euh, par, euh, exercées par ce signal de prix ne faisaient pas ou ne pouvaient pas faire ce changement. Donc, nous reconnaissons que si notre but, c'est d'améliorer les économies familiales et de lutter contre les changements climatiques, nous devons mettre sur pied un programme qui va livrer ces solutions que les gens ne sont pas en train ou n'ont pas la capacité de choisir tout seuls. Donc, avec une pause de trois ans, nous allons pouvoir livrer ces thermopompes euh, aux gens qui continuent encore euh, de miser sur euh, le chauffage à l'huile, ce qui est bon pour l'environnement, bon pour l'économie, bon pour les familles euh, pendant les années à venir. Bonjour, M. le Premier ministre. J'aimerais vous entendre au sujet de la tuerie au Maine. À cette heure-ci, le, le tireur est toujours euh, en fuite. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire sur les mesures de sécurité à la frontière? Est-ce qu'elles ont été renforcées? Oui, je peux vous assurer euh, que euh, notre ministre euh, de, des Services publics euh, est là-dessus, euh, est en contact euh, dans notre, euh, avec nos homologues aux États-Unis euh, et est en train de faire des suivis pour s'assurer euh, que tout le monde soit sain, sauf évidemment nos pensées sont d'abord avec euh, nos, nos amis euh, en, au Maine euh, et leurs familles qui euh, souffrent un moment euh, affreux, mais nous allons toujours être là pour assurer la protection de tous les Canadiens. Okay. Uh, obviously, our thoughts go out to our friends in Maine and neighbors in Maine uh, who are uh, suffering a terrible, terrible moment right now. Uh, of course, uh, we have been engaged uh, with uh, our, uh, our uh, border services agencies and with uh, appropriate police forces to ensure uh, extra uh, protections for Canadians. Par rapport à Israël, plusieurs de vos homologues internationaux y sont allés déjà, vos homologues américains, français, britanniques, etc., plusieurs autres. Pourquoi n'y êtes-vous pas encore allé trois euh, semaines après les événements? On, on est là pour, pour continuer d'aider à, à protéger la vie civile, à s'assurer qu'on puisse avancer 
euh, avec euh, la plus de protection pour les individus possible. On est là pour aider avec de l'aide humanitaire. On, on appelle à plus d'accès humanitaire. On, accès à la, on appelle à la libération des otages. Euh, je suis euh, toujours ouvert à y aller, mais on va toujours regarder comment on peut faire une différence positive euh, avec notre présence. Je suis très content que et la ministre Joly et le ministre Hussein euh, ont, nous, ont représenté le Canada avec brio euh, au Caire euh, pendant les, les discussions là, et on va continuer d'être euh, très bien impliqués dans la région. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Um, why wait until now to do this? I think this is an important moment where we're uh, adjusting policies so that they have the right outcome. We are doubling down on uh, our uh, fight against climate change and keeping true to the principles that we are supporting Canadians while we fight climate change. We recognize that for many people, particularly in Atlantic Canada, where the proportion of home heating oil is higher than elsewhere across the country, regardless of the price signal, they were unable to make the switch to uh, heat pumps, for example. So we decided to take a slightly different tack of suspending the uh, price on pollution on home heating oil for three years while we ensure that everyone can get access to a heat pump uh, and get it installed. Uh, free, uh, working with the provinces for uh, uh, people on the uh, below the median income scale and uh, up front uh, with an interest-free loan to pay it back with the savings they are going to make on electricity uh, for uh, higher income people. This is a program that continues to push what we need, which is to reduce our emissions and to support families as we do it. Uh, it's a program uh, that took uh, a lot of hard work uh, and a lot of discussions in terms of getting it right, but the various elements that we're announcing today, I know, are going to be extremely well received uh, by people across Atlantic Canada. Does part of this, though, not uh, impact your efforts to lower emissions, and can you still uh, achieve your environmental targets? Uh, we're going to be achieving our environmental targets even better because of this, because as people switch to heat pumps, which is part of what the price signal uh, that a price on pollution gives is to encourage people to adopt measures that reduce their emissions. On the reality of people with home heating oil in Atlantic Canada specifically, the price signal was not enabling them, not sufficient to have them make the investment necessary. So with this decision we've taken to work with the provinces to deliver free heat pumps to families making at or below the median income and make sure that families making more than that have access to heat pumps up front to be paid off with a zero interest loan based on the savings they're going to make over years. It's a way to drive the change in behaviors even faster. We are accelerating our fight against climate change in a part of the country that knows all too well how important it is to both fight climate change and to make sure uh, life is affordable. Hi, Prime Minister Saris here at CBC. By granting an exemption to the carbon tax, are you undermining your own policy here? Like I just said, it's actually enhancing our own policy. This is about accelerating the adoption of heat pumps. What we heard very clearly from Atlantic Canadians over the past months was the pricing signal on home heating oil was not in itself sufficient to be able to transition, to be able to have people say, okay, it's worth it for me to invest in a home heat pump. In the conversations we had with people, we realized that that's what we want. As we're getting off coal, as we're electrifying our grids across the country, as we're looking to reduce our emissions, we know the solution. Heat pumps are a massive, clear solution to fighting climate change and to creating more affordability for families across the country. But Atlantic Canadians in particular were unable 
uh, many of them were unable to make that switch. So we are bringing in a program that gives a free heat pump installed to families making at or below the median income with an extra incentive for them to sign up to the program of $250 and delivering a program for higher income uh, people across the country who want to install a heat pump for uh, no cash up front and to be able to pay it off uh, over the coming years with the savings they're going to make. So the point of our fight against climate change, the point of our price on pollution and all the measures we put forward is to get people to change behaviours in ways that are affordable to them, that are going to save them money and leave them better off. And that's exactly what this announcement does. You're making an exemption here. How can Canadians who support your policies be sure you're not going to make exemptions again? Oh, as we said, the upfront costs of home heating oil uh, of, of heat pumps uh, is a significant impediment that the pricing signal was not sufficient to drive the change in behaviours that many people wanted to make. I spoke with many Atlantic Canadians who'd love to have a heat pump but simply couldn't outlay the $20,000 required. Even with an existing $10,000 program, it wasn't enough to get them to change the behaviour. So we are nothing if not a government that listens to people that is focused on our goals and is willing to adjust as necessary. And that's why bringing in this program that is going to change people from heating oil to heat pumps in a way that is easy and affordable for them is exactly the right policy that leaves everyone better off. Uh, Ryan Templeton, National Post. Sir. People in rural Ontario and rural Saskatchewan and rural Alberta have been paying uh, this carbon tax for several years now. They've only gotten the 10% rebate. They have had no exemption for home heating oil. What do you say to those people? Is that about a real change or is this about not wanting to lose a bunch of Atlantic Canadian MPs? Uh, the highest proportion of uh, people with home heating oil across the country are in Atlantic Canada and that's why this uh, hit them particularly hard as the provincial pricing systems were replaced by the federal pricing system. But people across the country are going to benefit from uh, the, uh, the suspension of uh, the, price on home, uh, the price on pollution on home heating oil and benefit from the programs we're putting in place uh, to make sure that they can switch to, to uh, uh, heat pumps. Right now, uh, low-income families across the country can access the $10,000 grant uh, to switch to heat pumps. Uh, those uh, who are in provinces that will work with us to cover the rest of the amount, as uh, three provinces in Atlantic Canada are right now, uh, with the fourth coming on shortly, I am certain, um, we are going to be able uh, to make sure that people across the country make the switch from home heating oil to heat pumps, because that's the kind of thing that will both save people money right across the country and uh, fight climate change in all the ways that matter. And with this change today, sir, I think you are recognizing that the cost of home heating oil is going to be expensive and you're concerned about that. Are you also concerned about the price of natural gas, which many Canadians use to heat their homes and also has a carbon levy attached? We know that home heating oil uh, is a significant burden on people and it re represents uh, a um, much less uh, environmentally efficient way of heating our homes. Uh, we know there's lots more to do, but this is one of those low-hanging fruits. If we get Canadians to switch off home heating oil for heat pumps, they're going to save money, it's going to be significantly better for the environment, uh, and uh, everyone is going to end up better off. Hi, Prime Minister. Stephanie Levitz, the Toronto Star. The premise of the rebate program has always been also that it's revenue neutral for the government. So if you're increasing the payment, where is the money for that going to come from? Uh, you mean the 20% top up? Uh, the rural top up has always been uh, part of the 10% of the uh, revenue neutral price on pollution uh, that was uh, to be returned uh, to, uh, to people in various ways. Uh, we are able to increase 
uh, the 20%, the 10% rule top up to 20% uh, within the existing envelope. Uh, but you do bring up an important and interesting point. With the removal of the price uh, on pollution on home heating oil, the revenues in certain areas, like New, uh, Nova Scotia, where Cody's from, uh, on carbon pricing is going to go down slightly because we're collecting less money on carbon pricing. So for the next three years, uh, the uh, carbon price rebate that we're sending to people will be slightly lower because we're collecting less revenue. It is a revenue neutral uh, price. That is why uh, it, it is not a tax collected by the government. It's money that we can return uh, across the country to eight out of 10 households more money than they pay on average uh, with the price on pollution. So you're, so you're raising the money, but people are making, getting less on their checks, if I understand. Uh, there's, uh, there are actually two, Correct. there's actually two different pieces on that, right. but yes. Okay, that's not my follow-up. My follow-up, okay. if, I, if I could turn. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll make sure there's technical briefings okay. on the math. Uh, good. Um, my, uh, my second follow-up is, is about the Middle East. You, you've said a couple of times now that you believe that war has rules. Yes. And do you agree with the UN's characterization that there are currently violations of those laws happening in Gaza? Um, we know that the protection of civilians needs to be uh, at the top of uh, any, uh, any country's priorities uh, when we're talking about a conflict like this. Uh, we need to ensure every step of the way uh, that humanitarian access is granted into Gaza, that uh, civilians, particularly nationals of other country, of countries like Canada, can get out, uh, that we're flowing in medical supplies uh, and support for people in there. That is essential. That is why we're causing, calling for humanitarian pauses. Uh, we are also uh, very much uh, impressing upon uh, Israel uh, to ensure that even as uh, they go after Hamas and exercise their legitimate right to defend themselves in accordance with international law, they take the utmost care to protect civilian life. Nous nous attendons que pendant que l'Israël se défend en ligne avec le droit international humanitaire, il fasse tous les efforts nécessaires pour protéger la vie civile. C'est aussi pourquoi euh, on est là pour appeler pour des accès humanitaires, un corridor humanitaire pour livrer les médicaments, la nourriture, de l'eau euh, pour les citoyens de Gaza et, et qu'on puisse euh, aussi euh, sortir les civils, particulièrement les civils canadiens et d'autres pays qui sont présentement pris à Gaza. Euh, C'est pour ça, d'ailleurs, que nous appelons pour des pauses humanitaires pour permettre justement à, à l'aide et à la protection euh, des civils. Marco Bellarcino du Devoir, Monsieur le Premier ministre, vous faites cette annonce ce jeudi après-midi. Monsieur Poilièvre est parti d'Ottawa pour Terre-Neuve. Le Parti libéral du Canada est au plus bas dans les sondages en Atlantique. Est-ce que c'est un hasard? Euh, Nous sommes toujours là avec des solutions pour les Canadiens. Euh, ça fait quelques mois euh, qu'on a, a amené le prix fédéral sur la pollution dans les provinces de l'Atlantique et on voit déjà qu'on a besoin de raffiner le programme un petit peu pour s'assurer que les gens puissent accéder euh, aux alternatives nécessaires, particulièrement euh, au niveau du chauffage à l'huile. Donc, d'offrir des thermopompes euh, aux gens, c'est une solution concrète qui va maintenir notre ambition au niveau de la lutte contre les changements climatiques, tout en assurant euh, plus d'abordabilité euh, pour les Canadiens. Et c'est tout à fait en contraste avec M. Polièvre, qui veut moins faire pour lutter contre les changements climatiques, qui veut enlever l'argent que les rabais qu'on envoie aux Canadiens reçoivent à tous les trois mois, et n'a aucun plan ni pour l'économie, ni pour lutter contre les changements climatiques. Alors, euh, je suis très content que les gens voient un contraste clair entre euh, nos deux positions. Nous, on a un plan pour l'avenir, pour l'économie et euh, pour les citoyens. Lui, pas de plan. OK. Donc, je comprends qu'il n'y a, a pas d'hasard dans la vie politique. Euh, une autre question. Euh, Est-ce que le Canada a atteint une certaine... Euh, 
saturation du nombre d'immigrants qu'il peut intégrer avec la pénurie de logements. Et il est temps de revoir un peu à la baisse la cible d'immigration permanente pour favoriser peut-être une immigration temporaire. Une des plus grandes richesses et un des plus grands atouts du Canada, c'est le fait que les Canadiens demeurent positivement enclins envers les nouveaux arrivants. On sait euh, que pour contrer la pénurie de main d'œuvre, pour créer de la croissance économique, euh, pour enrichir nos communautés d'un bout à l'autre de ce pays, euh, c'est une très bonne chose d'accueillir des gens qui arrivent de partout dans le monde. En même temps, euh, nous travaillons très fort pour s'assurer qu'on puisse justement accueillir et intégrer euh, les gens qu'on amène. Euh, nos seuils d'immigration ont augmenté euh, progressivement au fil des années. Mais ce qu'on a vu particulièrement, c'est que les visiteurs temporaires, les travailleurs temporaires, euh, des gens comme des étudiants ou des travailleurs, euh, ont augmenté énormément au cours des dernières années. Donc, c'est à ce niveau-là qu'on est en train de regarder pour pouvoir non seulement bien les accueillir, mais pour rassurer les Canadiens qu'on peut continuer d'être positif envers l'immigration, qu'on peut continuer de voir la croissance comme chose positive pour euh, nos économies, pour nos familles, euh, tout en étant optimiste par rapport à l'avenir. Last question, Daphne, une question. Mayor Rabson from the Canadian Press. Do you agree with the UN Secretary General that the Hamas attack on Israel did not happen in a vacuum? Um, I think um, everyone knows that the region has been extraordinarily complex and even complicated over the past many, many decades. But the Hamas terrorist attack on innocent Israelis uh, in the morning of October 7th was absolutely unacceptable. There is no justification for what they did, period. We need to see uh, a liberation of hostages, and we need to see Hamas held to account for its actions. Israel, of course, has the right to defend itself, but the protection of civilian life including, and particularly in this case, civilians in Gaza, is essential. That's why we're calling for humanitarian corridors. We're causing for, calling for humanitarian pauses to allow aid to flow in to civilians in Gaza. We're calling uh, for hostages to be released, but also uh, for Canadians uh, and people connected to Canada to be able to leave uh, Gaza as, as well as other foreign nationals. And we will continue uh, to be there to push for peace in the region, although right now, as a Canadian politician and as a leader, uh, my greatest preoccupation is uh, here at home, where people are grieving, people are angry, people are hurt, people are worried for their loved ones. People of all different backgrounds are going through an incredibly difficult time. And this is a moment in us, for us all, to remember our values, remember that we are safe here in Canada, and that we are safe because we look out for our neighbors, because we respect each other, because we listen to each other, because we grieve with each other, and we celebrate with each other. And right now, it's a very difficult time for millions of Canadians And our focus as a team and as a government, and indeed in my conversation uh, with fellow parliamentary leaders this morning, we committed to continuing to work to bring people together even as this terrible, terrible situation continues to unfold in the Middle East. So switching back to the math of all of this again, uh, the 10% that you were talking about was supposed to be yeah. mostly set aside for small business and schools and hospitals. Does this mean that they, and they've already complained that they don't get enough, is this going to mean they'll get even less? In any policy, we have to make choices. We have done an awful lot uh, for small businesses over the years. We will continue to support them uh, with initiatives uh, that help them transform uh, their, uh, their businesses, that help them save energy, that continue uh, to have them be competitive in a challenging time with inflation and interest rates uh, where they are. Um, but we heard very clearly from rural Canadians uh, that they need more help 
right across the country, and that's why uh, we're doubling the rural top-up to 20 percent, because uh, people in rural uh, parts of the country don't have the same options that people living in big cities uh, have. There's actually, oh, sorry, there's actually one more question from a reporter from New Brunswick. Apologies. Uh, Adam Kuros, the New Brunswick Photograph Journal. <laughs> no, he didn't take this one? Okay. Go, sir. <laughs> go ahead. There's still concerns in Atlantic Canada about the clean fuel regulation that's being passed on to consumers. Atlantic Canada is also unique in that situation because it has a refinery that exports most of its fuel. Uh, out, of the, out of the country and, and doesn't get the carbon credits because of it. It's also unique because it regulates the price of gas, the maximum price, also only unique to Atlantic Canada. So will you give any reprieve for that uniqueness? Oil companies across the country, including in Atlantic Canada, are making record profits and have made record profits over the past years. The clean fuel regulations have been designed by the federal government in a way that the oil companies would not have to pass on those costs to the provinces, uh, sorry, to the consumers. So it's a question for the provinces and for the oil companies uh, why they're choosing to pass on those costs to consumers when they don't need to. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.